Good evening. Uh, my task this evening is to trace the early beginnings of the Friends of Baxter State Park. Following the creation of the park in the early 1930s, there were a number of persistent challenges to the park's forever wild sanctuary commitment that was always at the heart of Governor Baxter's intentions from the very beginning of his efforts. The challenges had been met over the years by a variety of citizen-centered efforts. Later examples of those challenges include the 1990 closing of the West Gate into the park, the demand for greater snowmobile access, the demand for more hunting access, and an assortment of other issues. The event that caused more serious conversation about public response, however, was the vote of the authority to allow vehicular access into the West Branch lands that had been bought from Great Northern Vapor Company in 1998, extending the southern border of the park to the West Branch of the Penobscot River. Though this issue was eventually resolved in favor of those lands remaining under sanctuary, a fascinating story in itself, the need to defend the forever wild commitment persisted. The first conversations were between Brunswick's John Lloyd and Harpswell's Phyllis Austin. John Neff soon joined in the effort to invite a group of park enthusiasts together to consider a friends group. That first gathering, in addition to those three, included Holly Dominey, Dave Getchell Sr., Josie McPhee, and others. This group endorsed the notion that it was indeed time to consider founding a friends group. In August uh, 16th of that year, an expanded group met and agreed to explore the notion further and then to invite Ken Olson of the Friends of Acadia National Park to meet with us to share his insights. In October of that year, that meeting with Kent Olson and Acadia employee Charlie Jacoby included a number of additional interested supporters and also was most helpful and the group decided to form, quote, an organization for the betterment and protection of Baxter State Park and its resources and that a mission statement and an organizational framework be developed at later meetings. In November 1999, continued discussion took place and a small committee was established to create a broad overall plan of organization. In February of 2000, a plan of organization was endorsed and Ben Townsend uh, volunteered to develop a draft of bylaws and to take care of state requirements for nonprofit status. In a meeting later that month, as participant numbers grew, names were suggested for the first board of directors. In March of 2000, it was agreed to call together a Friends of Baxter State Park Founders Meeting, and the invitation went out to a continually expanding list of potential members. Finally, in May of 2000, the Founders Meeting took place at the Kennebec Valley Technical College in Fairfield, Maine. The huge turnout for this meeting provided enthusiastic encouragement uh, to finalize the effort. And in June 15, 2000, the first meeting of the Board of Directors took place in Bangor. Officers were elected and the Friends of Baxter State Park was officially had launched. My tenure as president was then centered mostly on the early organizational structure and the beginnings of membership expansion. Holly Dominey was the next president. Holly. Thank you, John. When Ellen asked us to reflect upon the highlights of our terms as past presidents of Friends of Baxter, I have to admit I was stymied. I couldn't re recall any details of my term as second president. Um, but then Charlie Jacoby to the rescue. Charlie suggested I look online at the archives of the newsletters on the Friends of Baxter website, which I did. And today I say, hooray for Charlie Jacoby and hooray, 
hooray for the archives. Um, that painful lapse um, caused me to think about the importance of institutional memory um, in keeping an organization um, vital. And I'm sure that was at the core of Phyllis Austin and John Lloyd's um, request that um, those of us they gathered um, consider setting up a Friends of Baxter group. Um, external pressure was mounting to loosen policies and practices that um, the governor had embedded in his legal bequest. Um, those with original knowledge of the governor's values, his words, his deeds, were becoming ever fewer. Um, and we believed raising public awareness um, and promoting wide and well-informed public discussion would be crucial if Baxter's uh, intended blueprint was to be sustained in the years ahead. Um, with this in mind, uh, in Friends' third and fourth years, the board continued to put in motion key practices. Um, we used the newsletter and the annual meeting format, uh, for instance, to promote the concept of wilderness um, and to query the membership to evaluate Director Buzz Caverly's um, Wilderness Within proposal, some of you may well remember, and the potential impacts of land tracts actions um, adjacent to the park. Um, we urged also that the Park Authority undertake a, a long-range plan um, to strengthen and better institutionalize uh, park management strategies um, consistent with Governor Baxter's vision and bequest. And the authority eventually adopted the park management plan in 2012. Um, founder Don Hudson um, introduced Howard Whitcomb to the board, who, as you know, committed um, and was keen on compiling and strengthening accessibility to Governor Baxter's um, materials. And hooray for both men. We created subcommittees to focus on policy questions, um, membership development, and other matters um, to strengthen our organization. We raised public awareness um, by celebrating with the park the 100th anniversary of Governor Baxter's first visit to the area. Um, one of many trips to the park um, that we would make to familiarize ourselves with places and with the issues within the park. Um, and park staff were very accommodating of our needs. Um, Prior to the statewide election in 2002, going back a bit, um, back to the beginning of this period, we asked gubernatorial candidates for their opinions on long-range planning for the park. Um, I'm pleased uh, to recount that uh, candidate Baldacci um, did respond. He was the only one who responded, um, and he expressed strong support. Then, in 2006, as governor, his administration, working with partners, purchased and added the Katahdin Lake property um, to the park. Double kudos to Governor Baldacci. Um, we hope friends made some impact on his support um, for making sure that this missing piece of Baxter's original grand design wasn't lost. When Phyllis Austin called me, I wouldn't have done anything for her. You may all well remember her um, way back when. Um, I had no idea when she called that today I would have had the privilege of working with such a committed and effective group of men and women as friends can boast. Um, we're 
connected by our shared admiration for Governor Baxter um, and the defense of wildness. And for this, I shall ever be grateful. And next, Charlie Jacoby, president from 2004 to 2007. Hi everyone, my name is Charlie Jacoby and I served as president from 2004 to 2007. Well, I could rave about our resident historian and master of all things, Baxteriological. Yes, it's a word, Howard Whitcomb and his labor of love on the Baxter Materials Project, but I won't. I could talk about the addition of Katahdin Lake to the park and how for us it quickly became all Katahdin Lake all the time but I won't. I could mention also how treasurer Don Hudson said, we were sitting on our money and we should do something with it. So we made our first gift of $3,000 to the park and maybe Buzz thought we were expecting a quid pro quo, but I won't and we weren't. I could also talk about how board member John Lloyd received his junior ranger badge during this time. Well, I guess I just did. I hope John is with us as I offer my congratulations to him again. Instead, I'll say that the most important thing we did was to educate ourselves about the park. Like most of you, I had only ever been a visitor to Baxter State Park. Now, I needed to understand its history, its management policies, and its plans for the future. This education was essential for me and for all of us. I finally managed to plod through John Hackle's legacy of a lifetime on my second try, making highlights and notes. Trudy C's in The Deeds We Trust followed more easily and other references too. Lively policy committee discussions also helped. And now I ask you to allow me to flip flop here and rave. As a retired politician, I think I can do that. And I'm gonna do that. The value of the four volumes of Baxter materials is really beyond measure. I believe it contributed directly to the success of the Katahdin Lake campaign by enabling us and others to speak authoritatively about Governor Baxter's wishes for the park and Katahdin Lake in particular. I wish I could say it was great planning on our part, but it was prescient and great timing too. It and the later publication of Magnificent Obsession will pay dividends forever for a forever wild Baxter State Park. Kudos to Don Hudson for the idea and for recruiting Howard. I'll close now with a little story about the education of Charlie. On one of our field trips with Buzz, we encountered a moose along the tote road. I'll bet most of us have had this experience and become a little frustrated because we were goal driven at the time to exit the park or get to a trailhead or a campsite. I plead guilty to slightly pushy driving at times to persuade a moose to exit the road stage left or right. But not Buzz, not a chance. He had the patience of a saint or maybe Percival Baxter. He let that moose amble along the road at a distance out of sight to its heart's content. The resource, the moose came first the visitor experience was secondary. Or was it? Maybe the visitor experience was enjoying the moose as long as possible, and as Percival Baxter himself instructed us, in the right, unspoiled way. The lesson from Buzz was pretty clear to me. Moose have the right of way. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce our next president and my good friend, Barbara Bentley.
Thank you, Charlie, for paving the way. Although I was present at Friends First Meeting in 2000 and served in various volunteer positions throughout the first six years, I was frankly terrified by your suggestion that I join the board and serve as president. But we struck a deal. I'd do so if you let me continue as editor of Forever Wild. A win-win situation. At least that's how I saw it. What a wild ride we had. Fueled by the enthusiasm of our all-volunteer board and with expert support from a part-time bookkeeper, an admin assistant, and a volunteer coordinator, Friends of Baxter experienced a veritable growth spurt. My tenure as president happily coincided with the establishment of the Baxter Park Wilderness Fund Trust by H. Frank Troutman and the subsequent development of his close friendship with Friends of Baxter State Park. Our good fortune and something for which I am eternally grateful. Friends quarterly newsletter Forever Wild went technicolor and we took it online. Members contributed regular columns, John Neff's historical vignettes, Looking Back, and David Little's art detective column, Sleuthing About Katahdin, among them. Howard Whitcomb, expert on all things Baxter, became our official historian. Trip reports and letters from our readers were many. Book reviews written by Friends members were regular features. John Neff's Katahdin and Historic Journey in 2006, Howard Whitcomb's four-volume Percival P. Baxter's Vision of Baxter State Park in 2005, and Governor Baxter's Magnificent Obsession in 2008, Phyllis Austin's Wilderness Partners, a biography of Buzz Caverly in 2009, Neff and Whitcomb's Photographic History, Baxter State Park and Katahdin in 2012, and David Little's Art of Katahdin in 2013. These many experts contributed enormously to expanding public interest in the park and to boosting friends' presence in the broader community. With the help of Park Director Jensen Bissell, whose regular updates from the park began to appear in the newsletter in 2006, our relationship with the park strengthened as we found ways to do for the park things that it could not do for itself. We assisted in an economic impact survey of the park's role in the Katahdin region and obtained matching federal grants, those were RTP grants, to fund Maine Conservation Corps trail crews in the park. Members became trail stewards, participated in parks annual volunteer days, and testified on park-related issues in Maine legislative hearings. It was Shatanya York who made recruiters of us all, and membership numbers grew, headed for a thousand. I still carry Friends of Baxter business cards with me when I go hiking and invite park enthusiasts to join us wherever we meet. Just recently, I received an email from someone I met and recruited on Hamlin Peak 20 years ago that included a photocopy of the note I had given him at the time. Friends Outreach, publicity in French distributed in Quebec by a member there, and a trip to speak to friends of Mount Carlton in New Brunswick, brought us new members from Canada and reminded us how important this wilderness is to so many others, not just ourselves. Many of us, myself included, became shameless promoters of the park and of friends. It's something very easy to do once you get started. I put thousands and thousands of miles on my bright yellow VW Bug sporting this license plate. Imitation is the highest form of flattery, Jensen. Friends walks in the park, including our first warm winter weekend at New England Outdoor Center in 2008, 
brought members together and offered them special experiences in the park. One I remember included three days of bird walks with Judy Kellogg-Markowski, fly fishing on Webster Stream with Bill Bentley, and multiple hikes, including fossil and geological explorations for the rest of us. Friends trained members for four-person chainsaw crews, gave Leave No Trace scholarships, and funded training for search and rescue teams in the park. We took over publishing the Baxter Park calendar involving photographers near and far. We funded a complete inventory of park trails, setting the long range trail planning in motion, and distributed our Know Before You Go brochures to all seven main tourism centers, preparing park visitors for the wilderness experience. It became crystal clear that if you involve your members in activities and develop meaningful and exciting projects, funders will appear. Originally envisioned by Linda McKee, the Maine Youth Wilderness Leadership Program became a reality in 2009 and was immediately funded for its first five years by two enthusiastic donors. Other generous supporters stepped forward to fund our various publications and the purchase of the Clark Guide for the park. We, ex we sponsored exciting day-long activity field Governor Baxter Days, first in Portland in 2012, and then in Bangor in 2013. Teddy Roosevelt even joined us in Portland. Our annual meetings featured inspiring speakers on conservation and Katahdin-related topics, and all was included a member of Baxter State Park staff. In the 8th, we heard from a member of the Penobscot Nation. In the 12th, a scientist on climate change and in the 13th, Elliottsville Plantation on plans for lands to the east of the park, now Katahdin Woods and Waters National Monument. In 2012, we launched the Blazing a New Trail campaign that ultimately led to the hiring of our first executive director, Aaron McGuire. Aaron continues to show us what new heights we can reach. How lucky can we be? In closing, I'll share with you one special memory of my tenure. One day, Howard Whitcomb and I paid a visit to Governor John E. Baldacci at his office in the Capitol building in Augusta. Our mission was to deliver, to deliver a copy of Governor Baxter's Magnificent Obsession. Two copies, actually, one for the state of Maine and one for his personal library. Skeptical staff ushered us into his office and shut the door. We had a wonderful, relaxed conversation with the governor who seemed willing to spend more time with us than his staff thought appropriate. Each time they poked their heads in to remind him of his other commitments that day, he waved them off. He said to us, I always have time for Baxter. When it came time to take a photo, my camera failed. Battery was dead. So you and I are left to picture the scene for ourselves. Three Baxter enthusiasts talking about something each held dear. My hope is that all of you and many more after you will always find time for Baxter. Thank you, everyone, for your enthusiasm for Baxter's Wilderness Vision. And now, back to our next president, again, Charlie Jacoby. Hello again. I guess you could say from 2013 to 2015, I had the dubious distinction of being the Grover Cleveland of the Friends. I also had the dubious distinction of following in the wake of the Energizer Bunny known as Barbara Bentley. That's a tough act to follow, but this recidivist was willing to give it a go. We took a leap of faith in May 2013 and Aaron McGuire leaped with us. I did my best to stay out of his way, let him get his feet on the ground, and help him ease into the friend's leadership role. 
it didn't take long. Since a walk in the park beats a conference table any day, early on Aaron and I made sure to spend time hiking in the park with Jensen so we could establish and cultivate our relationship with him and the park. Everything that followed depended on this. Speaking of trails, we all know trails are the heart of what the park is all about. So we were able to get trails grants for the Marston and Abal trails over these two years. As you well know, trail needs are never ending. And speaking of hearts, the Maine Youth Wilderness Leadership Program became near and dear to Aaron's heart at the get-go, and he ran with it and put his personal stamp on it. Stamp on it. It's a great, great program. Thank you, Linda McKee, for your vision. Glenn Middlehauser's Plants of Baxter State Park project was also right in Aaron's wheelhouse. It was Aldo Leopold who told us, the first rule of intelligent tinkering is to save all the parts. Thanks to Glenn, and with our help, park staff know a lot more about the floral parts. Tinkering, however, well, that's another story. With the board's support, Aaron began to give us a continued presence in Millinocket and beyond with the speaker series on nature-based tourism, which offered a way forward from the demise of the mills. Our participation in the community is absolutely essential, and it has grown since then. As I departed my second term, I wrote my last column for the newsletter entitled, What Was I Thinking? What on earth was I thinking when I took that drive to Augusta in October 1999? Not much, I can tell you. I was a federal employee dipping my feet in a nonprofit wilderness I knew little about. Before long, I was in way over my head. But many other better heads kept me afloat. Thank you, Dave Getchell Sr. And what had I gotten from all this? Well, I learned a lot more about the park and it made me get to the park far more often on field trips and as a trail volunteer, and of course for fun too. But the best part about the experience was meeting and making so many friends with a capital F. Great people with a passion for the park. Many of you out there, plus so many park staff as well. And what I'm thinking now will be no surprise to you. Our success depends on making friends, capital F and small f, and building relationships, and that includes all of you. Finally, I want to give a shout out for Aaron. He has ably led us through many challenges, and I especially want to give a shout out to his home team, Ashley, Rowan, and Retta, who keep him sane and grounded so he can fulfill his passion for the park at least in part, through the friends. Thank you, Aaron, for taking a chance with us and leaping into the unknown. And many thanks to all of you out there for your friendship. And now I'd like to introduce another good friend, our next president, Dick Klain. Thanks, Charlie. After serving on the Friends Board of Directors for a few years, I was struck by the contributions that individual board members have made to the success of our organization. Their insight, connections to other organizations, corporations and entities, and ability to formulate action based on goals of our annual retreats has been extraordinary. I especially want to acknowledge the contributions of my two vice presidents, Jill Apollity and Henry Bucus. Special thanks, too, to long-serving board member, secretary, and editor extraordinaire, Jim St. Pierre. To Chaitanya York, John Neff, and Barbara Bentley, I can't thank you enough for making me connected with all the marvelous people constituting Friends of Baxter State Park. Relationships are the center of our success. During my time as your president, we established the working role of a new executive director, including an evaluation procedure that kept the goals of the organization front and center. Because of his leadership, we accessed the contact information of park visitors. Culling this information was tedious, but it led to a mailing 
that quickly boosted our membership over a long-established goal of 1,000. We established Forever Friends, allowing members to efficiently make monthly contributions. To assist in the funding of the growing list of youth-oriented programs, we more than doubled grant proposals. Part-time grant writer Bill Bayreuther was a great asset in that process. These activities established our finances so that we could improve our service to the park, our membership, and the community. At a board retreat, Gary Friedman put forth an idea that quickly gained the support of our board, the membership, and several funders to hire local teens to work in the park on outdoor projects under the park's super leadership. The Baxter Youth Conservation Corps resulted, and the rest is history. The publication, The Plants of Baxter State Park, set a scientific baseline of park flora. As our climate changes, Baxter State Park will, in future years, have a benchmark to measure changes as new species move in, others move up in elevation, and still others cease to exist within the park. After years of planning and fundraising, we presented new mountain models to Baxter State Park that accurately reflect the current trails and geographical features. A very special thank you to the Thompson and the Bucus families. Activities have always been a part of our service to our membership. Over the years, our Walks in the Park program has waxed and waned. Two notable additions took place during my tenure, a friend's trip to Italy. Twelve members explored the park system and the Dolomites, hiking on roads dating from the early days of Rome and walking through forests that had been managed for centuries. Back home, friend's member and Baxter State Park artist and residence alumna, Evelyn Dumphy led two tours of the Marsden Hartley Special Exhibit at the Colby College Art Gallery, where we saw the artist's interpretation of the Katahdin area in the early 20th century. Our popular annual Warm Winter Weekend has been a real joy thanks to the planning and supervision of Ann Huntington, Jill Apollity, Barb Bentley, and Howard Whitcomb. Let's hope that we will be able to do that again soon. Safeguarding Percival Baxter's legacy has always been a big part of our mission. A large part of that is education and collaboration. The Finish Well campaign for Appalachian Trail through hikers came about by working together with the Appalachian Trail Conservancy, Appalachian Long Distance Hikers Association, Maine Appalachian Trail Club, Baxter State Park, and local businesses offering our perspective at meetings of the Baxter State Park Authority has made us a welcome presence at the table. Finally, I want to echo Charlie's remarks about the leadership and work ethic of our Executive Director, Aaron McGuire. Very simply, he has set a high standard indeed. It was a profound pleasure to have had the opportunity to lead this organization. Thanks to all of you who helped to support our work during my time at the helm. And now I'd like to introduce our current president, Ellen Baum. Three, two, one. Thank you, Dick. My tenure started pretty smoothly. In fact, one of my first actions was to do nothing, to simply be a bystander and absorb the knowledge and commitment of friends, how well they knew the park, its origins and threats to its mission. A bill was introduced to allow seaplanes to land on Katahdin Lake. Friends mobilized to oppose the bill and saved Katahdin Lake again. So many of you brought an institutional memory of what was and was not in the original Katahdin Lake deal, including Ken Spaulding dragging out his own 13-year-old notes and Jill Ippolati's long legislative reach. Every member of the Joint Standing Committee on Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry received Howard Whitcomb's magnificent obsession. The bill did not make it out of committee. We are very much the organization that started 21 years ago, and we are changing. I arrived when Aaron was director and Sarah Holland was membership manager. Even with their competence, they couldn't do it all. 
With Kathy Brown, we brought on a communication and outreach coordinator and a staff presence in Millinocket. Mary Weitzman joined as deputy director just as COVID began to rear its head. The contribution from these two women is enormous. A working staff of four has given us the bandwidth to take some of you up on suggestions for what friends might do. Sarah decided it was time to move on. I can't thank her enough for being such a steady hand on the tiller. Talk about institutional memory and relationship building. We look forward to welcoming Sarah's replacement in the next week or so. In the summer of 2019, Maine Youth Wilderness Program and Baxter Youth Conservation Corps flourished. We began planning for an expanded BYCC for 2020. Much of the rest is the present, COVID-19. In 2020, we followed the lead of Chiwanki, our program partner, and canceled the MYWP for one year. Aaron reimagined BYCC into a fellowship program that ran successfully for two summers. We postponed our annual meeting scheduled for April 2020, then turned it into a virtual fall meeting, and you joined. We met virtually in April 2021, and you joined, and here we are again. But COVID hasn't stopped us. We continue to work closely with communities around the park. We are participating in First Light, a bridge between conservation organizations and Penobscot, Passamaquoddy, Maliseet, and Mi'kmaq communities. And we are undertaking our own self-education on tribal history and issues. We have launched a How to Baxter series. We have a greater presence on social media. Aaron and Evan have an excellent working relationship. I'm itching to see you all in person. I can't wait to have an in the flesh board meeting and to hike together. While very few of our current board members are founding members, all of us have a history and connection to the park and a deep appreciation of Percival Baxter's gift and mission. Speaking of gratitude, believe it or not, founding members are not shrinking violets. In so many ways, you have kept us vital on our toes and in good financial standing. Two years ago, one of you made a substantial gift to kick off an endowment campaign to provide future support for our programs, advocacy, and other park activities. Many of our founding, long time, and board members have given generously. Tonight, I am announcing the public phase, targeting a goal of a quarter of a million dollars by the end of the campaign. We are two thirds of the way there and expect the endowment to keep growing after the close of the campaign. Thank you all, those who have given and pledged, as well as those of you who will. This would have been my opportunity to introduce Governor Mills. Instead, in COVID style, I'm introducing you to her pre-recorded message. The governor is no stranger to the park. As Attorney General, she served two terms on the Baxter State Park Authority from 2008 to 2010, and again from 2012 to 2016. This March, she proclaimed March 3rd as Baxter State Park Day in honor of the 90th anniversary of the park's creation. And she's in the park right now. Thank you, Governor. Thank you all. Hello, this is Governor Janet Mills. As I prepare for yet another visit to Baxter Park this week, I want to wish a very happy 21st birthday to the friends of Baxter State Park. I know that you pictured having a, an in-person party and I want to thank you for transitioning, pivoting to this virtual celebration instead to keep yourselves and your guests safe during this ongoing pandemic. Thank you for that. You know, it was my honor to serve uh, for eight years as a member of the Baxter Park Authority as your Attorney General and to work with the Friends of Baxter State Park, to meet the rangers, to greet the visitors, to hike and photograph the landscape, to, and to preserve the center, serenity of these 209,000 beautiful acres, the 46 mountain peaks, the untamed rivers and streams, the 50 lakes and ponds, the native brook trout, the uncultivated flora and fauna. 
A particularly gratifying part of my service on the authority was the work we did with the Friends of Baxter State Park. When Governor Baxter deeded to the people of Maine the first 5,960 acres 90 years ago, he is, of course, stipulated that it should be forever used for public park and recreational purposes and shall forever be left in the natural wild state and shall forever be kept as a sanctuary for wild beasts and birds. Your advocacy, your cons conservation fellows program, your support for trail maintenance, youth programs, scientific research, and volunteerism have all made Governor Baxter's dream come true. Stewards like you and like Helen Taylor and Buzz Caverly and Jensen Bissell and many others have preserved Baxter State Park as a sanctuary for wildlife and a safe place for visitors from all over to learn about and respect our natural world. This special place has been even more important during these last 18 months a draw to, be, to people seeking refuge from a once-in-a-generation global pandemic. More than ever before, Maine residents have enjoyed our 48 state parks and monuments, and Baxter Park in particular, a uniquely non-commercial space. A place to avoid the crowds in the city, a place to escape a deadly virus, and to explore and take refuge in Maine's most beautiful and inspiring places. As for me, I enjoy visiting the park every year, shutting off the cell phone, the computer, and the TV, and coming to understand better my place in the broader natural world. The park is an escape from the daily business of governing, the daily business of business for all of us, a place of respite and repair. We love it in its human silence, only the wind to cheer you on or to challenge you at the summit. Only the rush of water to comfort you in the stream. Only the stare of a curious moose to give you all the conversation you need. The park is a place in my mind where I can go on a deep winter's night. It's a picture in my soul, a thing I know will always be there no matter how strange the storm, how wild the wind, how far the ride, how tough the seasons of a life. It is our common duty to honor it, to preserve it, and to love it as I know you do. Thank you for your dedication to preserving and protecting this pre precious sanctuary in the middle of our wonderful state. Happy anniversary, friends. Stay safe. And thank you.